Hi Rockridge, this is Mrs. Berger and today we will be going through a list of topics that fall under the heading combinatorics. Combinatorics. It sounds like a made up word but it's actually not. It's the way we can combine all these kinds of different things. Um, within combinatorics we'll be talking about three different things. The fundamental counting principle, permutations, and combinations. So all of that falls under the header of combinatorics. That should be a quick, pretty quick lesson today. Um, just a little bit different than some of the things that we've studied in the past. And this is of course a great topic for the SOL. The SOL folks love asking questions about combinatorics. The first thing we will discuss is found fundamental counting principle. So basically what that says is if one event can occur in m number of ways and another event can occur in n number of ways, then the number of ways that they can occur together is m times n. So that's the principle itself. To see it in action, we've got a couple of examples here. So the first example we have is a restaurant is offering a special in which you choose one uh, appetizer, one entree, and one dessert to make a meal. And there are three choices for appetizers, seven choices for entrees, and five choices for desserts and they want to know how many different meals are available for the special. So if you went out with your friends, how many different ways could you put together a meal from those three appetizers, seven entrees, and five desserts? And we will use the fundamental counting principles to decide that because we want the first event, appetizers, times the second event, entrees, times the third event, desserts. So each of those is what we call an event, and the different combinations of that, the different ways that those can be combined are 3 times 7 times 5, or m times n, or you know you can go on forever with the different letters. So there are 105 different meals that you could make out of those choices. This of course is why it takes so long for you and your friends or your family to decide on what to eat, right? You have 105 different ways you could combine those things. Let's take a look at a little different type of problem. A license plate. So the standard configuration for a Texas license plate is one letter followed by two digits and then three letters. So how many different license plates are possible if letters and digits can be repeated? So we'll do that calculation and then we'll do the question again but we'll say what if you're not allowed to repeat digits? Okay. So we want to know basically how many vehicles could Texas support with this format, right? So first let's do if you can allow repeats. So if repeated. And for these, I really like to make little slots, little spots for the uh, different parts of the license plate, right? So there's a letter, two numbers, and then one, two, three letters. And then underneath each spot, I like to write how many different choices I have, right? So if this is a letter, and this is a number, and this is a number, and this is a letter, a letter, a letter, let's think about this. How many different letters are there in the English language to choose from? right there are 26 how many numbers now we can use digits 0 through 9 right you see in license plates right you can use 0 through 9 so that's actually 10 different choices and then on the next number since we're allowed to repeat so even if we use the number 3 we can reuse the number 3 so it's not like we've diminished the options here so we have another 10 choices there and of course the letters, we're allowed to reuse them, so if we use the letter M uh, on the first letter, we can reuse it. So we still have 26 choices here, 26 choices here, and 26 choices here. And this is a fundamental counting principle. You are having the event of a letter, so your first event is a letter, your second event is a number, your third event, your fourth event, your fifth event, your sixth event. All these events are trying to happen all at once, and so you need to know how many ways each event could happen individually and then you multiply it together to see how many ways they could happen together. So it's pretty easy math once you set up the problem. It's, that's pretty typical of all of Algebra 2 problems, right? Once you have it, you have a calculator, you can easily multiply this out. But coming up with the ways to, to combine this is, is the hard part. All right, so the answer to this question, if you've already done it, 45,697,600 license plates. So that's how many vehicles Texas could support, 45 million, a little over 45 million different vehicles if that was their policy on which uh, letters and, and numbers could fill those spots. Now let's do this again, but say, you know what, I'm not going to allow you to repeat values. So we'll set up our slots again. We still have the same requirements for the slots. We need a letter, 
followed by a number, followed by a number, followed by a letter, followed by a letter, followed by a letter. And you, of course, don't have to set this up this way. It's just my way of looking at it visually. Now, for the first slot, we have 26 letters to choose from. Still, That's still the case. And for the next slot, we have 10 numbers to choose from. That's still the, the case. But then for the next slot, I'm not allowed to repeat my original number. So if I'm not allowed to repeat the number that I used in the second slot, I'm down to nine choices. And for the next letter slot, I'm not allowed to repeat whatever letter I used in the first slot, so I'm down to 25 choices. I don't know which choices they are, but I still have, I have 25 of them. And then after we use that letter, we're down to 24 choices. And after we use that letter, we're down to 23 choices for letters. So again, you can see why visually setting up the license plate like this would be a little bit easier to see how the problem works out. So in this case, I'm only allowed to issue 32,292,000 license plates, which is fine. You know, for the police trying to um, work with witnesses if they saw a crime or something like that, if they're trying to identify a license plate, um, there would only be 32 million combinations. But also, um, you know that if somebody thought they saw an E as the first letter, they know that the last three letters couldn't possibly be E. So it might help the police a little bit. And as long as Texas doesn't have to support more than 32 million license plates, it's, it's fine to require that the letters and numbers not be repeated. Okay, so those are the types of choices that you could do. So that is fundamental counting principle. We'll give you some extra practice problems around that. But basically, try to figure out if you're looking at a problem in which you're taking um, an event that, that could happen a certain number of ways and another event that can happen a certain number of ways, and you're trying to figure out how many ways they can happen together. Okay, that's when you use the fundamental counting principle. Now, if you are trying to find um, the, uh, uh, how many ways in which uh, different things can be ordered, you're looking at a permutation. So permutation order matters. Okay? That is the most important part of determining if you're looking at a permutation. Order matters. If you're looking at a problem in which order matters, that's a permutation. So a permutation is basically how many ways can I order these uh, n objects, however many you have, how many ways can I line these up in order? And the way we calculate that manually is n factorial. What factorial means, that's what this exclamation point is, what factorial means is, let's, let's just take an example, 4 factorial, okay, you're, you're trying to line up 4 different things. 4 factorial means, three, oh, sorry, got ahead of myself. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so 4 factorial ends up being 24. n factorial means you take the number and you multiply it by the one right below it, times the one right below that, times the one right all the way down until you get to 1. Okay, that's how you multiply factorial. And the way we do this on our calculator, in case you have a number much bigger than 4, is we find the math menu, math Go over to prob for probability, and you'll see the factorial choice is number four. Four for factorial. Now, of course, we have factorial of nothing. That, that doesn't really, right, there's an error for that, right? So let's make sure that we put a number in front of that. So let's just do the one that we just did. Four factorial is math prob choice four. So four factorial does indeed come out to 24. Now this is super helpful if you're trying to find 25 factorial, right? We're not going to sit there and punch buttons 25 times 24 times 23 times 22. That would just take forever. So 25 factorial is done very quickly in the calculator. And this is on most calculators. Now be careful when you get these really, really big numbers. Uh, the answer to 25 factorial is not 1.5. It's 1.55 times 10 to the 25th power. You see that E at the end. So make sure you're reading your output correctly. Okay. All right, so that's the shorthand for that. Now, permutations, how many ways can we order things? And if you think about this, the question about the license plate, remember when we said we couldn't repeat? That's basically what a permutation is, right? When you line uh, a group of people um, or horses, if you line things up, once one uh, horse or once one person fills that first slot, you can't repeat that horse, right? So it's a lot like the fundamental counting principle, um, as long as things can't be repeated, if, if that helps you. So let's look at our example. It's even more helpful. Ten teams are competing in the final round of the Olympic four-person bobsledding competition. And how many different ways can those ten teams finish the competition? And let's assume that we can't have ties because that would be troublesome, right? Now, a visual might help. Um, so we can always do that, right? So first place, second place, third place. Again, we can't have ties. 
fourth place, fifth place, all the way down to tenth place, right? So that's what we're talking about here. Now, once the first team crosses the finish line, right? So let's say we've got ten teams competing. Um, there's a possibility of all ten of them winning, right? So that there could be ten teams that get first place. But once one of those teams gets first place, we only have nine teams that could get second place. And once they go, we only have eight teams that could get third place. And then seven, and then six, and so forth. So you start to see the pattern. So what can we use on our calculator to help us solve this question? Well, we can say if ten teams are competing, ten factorial is the number of ways that we could finish, right? There's ten different ways that you could have somebody in first place, nine different ways you could have second place, and so forth. So the way that these could finish, let me use my calculator because that's super helpful, is ten factorial. So let's see, was that three? 3.6 million different ways. And that's of course why competitive sports are super exciting, right? The, these are, there's so many different ways that this could be finished. So 3,628,800 different ways that those 10 bobsledding teams could finish the competition. Now our next question, how many different ways can three of the bobsledding teams finish first, second, and third to win gold, silver, and bronze. So this is still making use of permutation. Order still matters. First place, second place, third place, that matters. There is a winner, that matters. But right now we only want to talk about first place, second place, and third place, right? Gold, silver, and bronze. We don't care about any of the other placeholders. So if that's the case, then we're talking about 10 teams could finish first, times the remaining nine that could finish second, times the remaining eight that could finish third. So that's 720 ways three teams could finish first, second, and third. Okay, so just make sure you read your phrasing of your question. You can definitely tell already that the phrasing of the question and just the setup of the problem is the hardest on these. Now we have another little subset of questions. It's very similar to what we just looked at. And that's the permutation of n objects taken r at a time. So this is like looking at a subset, just like we did um, with the with the bobsledding teams, just the, the first three placeholders, okay? And once again, we have some help on our calculator through this. So if you are looking at the way um, three of the ten teams can finish, or in this horse show example, um, if you're trying to look at how many possible winning orders there are for a competition with 12 um, horses, and we just want to look at the top three winning horses, the way we phrase that is um, n choose r. So n is the total of competitors. So in our last example, that was ten bobsledding teams, and we wanted to know the top three winners. In this example, it's going to be twelve horses, and again we want to know the three winners. So anytime you're trying to choose a subset of the winners or the order, you're looking at a permutation of n objects taken at r at a time. Now, on your SOL and on your uh, quizzes and tests, you will have this formula on your formula sheet. So you'll, uh, you can easily say n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, and you're done. So you can certainly calculate that by hand. We also have another great tool available to us in our calculator. Same menu, so math, go over to prob. And this time, look at that, you have n, p, r and choose R for a permutation, so choose two, and we can just fill in. Now let's do the bobsled first. So we had ten total bobsled teams, and we wanted to know how the top, how many different ways the top three can finish. And look at that, 720. So you can do this either way. You can just implement it into the formula, um, or if you can remember where to find this on the calculator, you can use NPR on your calculator. So let's look at our horse example now. We have twelve horses, we want to know how they finish. Order matters. There's a first place, a second place, a third place for these horses. So we're going to say this is a permutation of 12 objects taken three at a time. We want the top three. You can simply say, all right, well, I know that's 12 factorial over 12 minus 3 factorial, or 12 factorial divided by 9 factorial. And you could even do this by hand by saying 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial divided by 9 factorial. So 
So you could even um, get to this answer uh, by hand a little bit faster. Um, you're probably already on your way to your calculator just saying, you know what, I like just saying math prob. Yeah. Sorry about that, my calculator's flaking out, but you know what you're doing. Uh, math prob, go down to NPR. Put the 12 first, always put the big number first, the, the, the whole set of things, and then the subset of things goes second. And you should be getting whichever method you chose to do, by hand with the formula or with crossing out, you should get 1,320 possibilities. Okay. Hopefully my calculator will feel better in a couple minutes so that when we use it again, it won't be having problems. All right, one more type of permutation we'll talk about before we talk about combinations. Permutations with repetition. So this is all about distinguishable permutations. If you think about it, if you're, we're going to look at these examples, Miami and Tallahassee. If you were to swap the placement uh, of the two I's in Miami, or the two M's in Miami, the human eye, the human brain, could not tell the difference, right? Those are indistinguishable. You can't tell the difference between those, okay? So if we just, and we, of course we can find the different ways we could combine those letters. We just saw how to do that. But if we want to know how many we can combine them into things that are distinguishable or into things that we can tell the difference, we're going to need to divide out the repeats. Okay? So you just need to remember, if, if somebody is specifically asking you a question about distinguishable permutations, it means there are probably repeats that are hard to tell the difference on, and you're going to need to divide them out. So for question A, Let's document, we have two M's and we have two I's that we'll need to divide out. We have five letter places, one, two, three, four, five different letters or placements. So that is what causes us to put five factorial on the top. That's how many places there are that different letters can be combined in, okay? And then we need to divide out, that's what this means, divide out where they're repeated. And so for the M's, we have two repeats there. And for the I's, we have two repeats there. So that's two factorial and two factorial. So what this actually turns out to be is, if we just wanted to do it by hand, five times four times three times two times one divided by two times one times two times one. That's actually what's happening. If you want to go into your calculator, mine's being a troublemaker right now, but if you want to go into your calculator and use the factorials without doing this by hand, that's totally fine, right? So obviously the ones don't have any bearing on this. This two can cancel. This two will make this into a two. And we could actually call this 30, right? Five times three times two is 30. So there's 30 different permutations, distinguishable permutations of the letters in Miami. So you can certainly do this by hand. Now just make sure that when you divide, you do five factorial, make sure you divide the combination of two factorial and two factorial. Okay? If ever you're questioning if the calculator is giving you the right thing, you can always try to use your formulas and do it by hand. All right, Tallahassee. Let's take a look at Tallahassee. How many spots are there in Tallahassee? Go ahead and count them. Hopefully you said there are 11 spots, so we know the numerator is going to be 11 factorial. on the top. Now we need to go take a look at the repeats. Let's log the repeats. Um, there aren't T's repeated. There are three A's, two L's, two S's, and two E's. So because we can't distinguish among all those repeated A's and L's and S's and E's, we need to divide them out. So we've got a three factorial division for the A's, a two factorial division for the L's, a two factorial division for the S's, and a two factorial division for the E's. Just make sure that you use proper um, parentheses if you're using your calculator. You can certainly write this out as well, 11 times 10 times 5 times 4 times, you know, 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, and so forth. That's what those factorials mean. Um, you may not just simply divide um, the numbers themselves. You need to uh, multiply them all out if you're going to do this by hand. Okay. So go ahead and crunch that in the calculator. Pause the video if you need to. When I crunched this, I saw that there were 831,600 different ways you could mix up the letters in Tallahassee 
and get a distinguishable permutation, a list of distinguishable permutations. Okay. All right. So those are all the problems that have in which order matters. Okay. The, the ways that the letters are lined up, the way that the horses are lined up, the Bob's letters. Anytime you've got lining up or winners, that's a permutation because order matters. Combinations, on the other hand, is when order is not important. Okay, so a combination is when you're taking R different things, uh, an R subset of N things, and you know that order is not important. And my favorite for this is a deck of cards. Right? We don't care what order we get the cards in, we just care how great our hand is. Okay, so that's definitely a combination. Let's see how combinations work. Um, once again, you'll have this formula available to you. You can certainly do things by hand, but also I'll show you on your calculator, once mine stops being a pain, I'll show you on the calculator. It's in the same menu, Math Prob. But in order to find a combination, again, the big number goes on the left and the little number goes on the right, so the big number is N, so that's all of the things you're looking at. And if you're just looking at different combinations of a subset of those, that's what R is. So our first example is, you've got 52 cards, and you want to know uh, in which uh, if the order in which they're dealt is not important, which is true, how many different five card hands are possible. And so what we're talking about is a combination out of the 52 cards we're going to be dealt five of them. And we want to know how many different combinations of those five cards we can get. So if we're going to do our formula, we would do 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. Okay, so that's the manual way to do it. You can also do this on your calculator. And either way you put it in, you should get 2,598,960 different hands. That's, of course, why card games are so exciting, right? There's 2.5 million ways you could be dealt 5 cards. Okay. If you didn't get that number, please pause the video and make sure that you understand how to do the math manually or in your calculator. We'll go math, go over to prob, and now we see NCR for combination. So if order doesn't matter, you'll use three combination. And we have 52 cards, and we're being dealt five of them. So those are two and a half million ways. Okay. Either way is fine. I don't need to. Uh, I would like you to document at least this part so that I know what you read out of the problem. Um, but other than that, if you want to use the calculator, if you want to do it by hand, it's up to you. Now, this next question is a little bit trickier. In how many five card? In how many ways can five cards uh, be of the same color? So we're still being dealt um, five cards. But how can you? How many different ways could you get all black cards? How many different ways could you get all red cards? Well, there's 26 red cards, and there's 26 black cards. So we could get, out of the 26 cards, we could get five of them. That would be all the same color. We could get 26 black cards. So out of the 26 black cards, we could be dealt five of them, and those would be all black. So here's all the reds, here's all the blacks. How many different ways could we get all reds? or all blacks, all the same color. Both of those fit that bill, right? All red or all black fit this whole same color thing. So we would take the combination of the reds plus the combination of blacks, and that would be all the different ways that we could get all one color. It's a very, very tricky problem. It's a very short sentence, but it's a very tricky problem. If you need to, pause the video and think about why that is. Um, but obviously, when you turn this through, so you would do uh, two different combinations, and then you would add them together. When you do that, you'll have 131,560 hands. Okay. If you didn't get that number on your own, or if you need to uh, pause for a minute and think about that, please do so. Okay, that's a little bit of a tricky problem. All right, many times our combinations are around uh, playing cards, but we have a little creative problem here. Shakespeare's plays. Okay, so there's um, 38 plays total. Believe it or not, that's all he wrote, 38 plays. 18 are comedies, 10 are histories, and 10 are tragedies. The question is, how many different sets of two comedies and one tragedy can you read? Now, the order in which we read these plays does not matter. 
That's why we're looking at a combination. We are trying to read comedies and tragedies all in one course. I guess let's say this is an English class and you have to read two comedies and a tragedy. And so we're doing this all in one class. Those two events, comedies and tragedies, happen together. And so we are going to take our, as our uh, concept of combinations and we're going to marry it to the, the concept of fundamental counting principle with this question. So first, comedies. How many total comedies are there? We're reading, out of 18 comedies, we're reading two of them. 18 choose two. And tragedies, out of the 10 tragedies, we're reading one of them. 10 choose one. And we don't care which order we read them in. And then in this one class, we're reading two comedies and a tragedy. And so it's like having an appetizer and an entree. We're doing it together. So once we get the combination of 18 choose 2, and once we get the combination of 10 choose 1, we then take those two numbers and multiply them together. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to try that on your own. Certainly make use of your calculator if you don't like using the formula, or use the formula if you'd like to see how it works out. But by the time you're finished, you should find 1,530 1, different sets of plays. Which is of course why English teachers have such fun grading your papers. <laughs> There's 1,530 different ways you could choose two comedies and a tragedy. Now the next one is even more interesting. How many different sets of at most three plays can you read? These problems are getting so difficult, right? This is really, really tricky. Think about what it means to be at most three plays. What, what fits that bill? Well, three plays is at most three plays. You could read three. You could read two. Two is at most three, right? No more than no more than three is how you say that, right? No more than three. And one play is less than or no more than three. Okay? And so and we don't have any tragedy or history or comedy limitations set on this for this problem. So we're looking at all thirty eight of them. So how we answer this one is we say, all right, out of the 38, we could read three of them, any three, and in any order, we don't care, order doesn't matter, so that's why it's a combination. Out of those 38, we could read two of them, or out of those 38, we could read one of them. Now, we're not going to read three and read three, two and read one, so this isn't like a fundamental counting principle where we multiply everything together. Okay, we're not trying to read 3 and 2 and 1. We're trying to read 3 or read 2 or read 1. That satisfies our no more than. When it's an or problem, we add them together. Read 3 or read 2 or read 1. When it's an and problem, we multiply. When it's an or problem, we add. And obviously, as always, the setup is the hardest part. Now it's our job to just punch some buttons on our calculator, right? So you would do NCR, combination of 38 choose 3, and you should get 8,436. You win uh, NCR on 38 choose 2 and get 703. And you choose one out of 38, obviously that's 38 different ways, right? So there are 9,177 sets of no more than three plays. Those last few were definitely the trickiest, right? So read these questions carefully. Um, don't get too frustrated if you can't um, understand what, what's being asked. This just takes practice, okay? So group practice is a bit short. Go ahead and attempt these. Um, if you get frustrated and just can't even get started, you can go ahead and, and play the video. But pause the video now and try these. And then when you get frustrated or when you think you're not frustrated that you got it right, go ahead and start the video again, okay? So pause the video now. All right, welcome back. Number one, Alfredo's getting dressed. He has four clean shirts, three pairs of clean pants, and two pairs of clean socks. So how many outfits could he do? Now this is a meal deal, right? He's gotta have one shirt, one pair of pants, one pair of socks. This is just like a meal deal. So what concept are we using? We're using fundamental counting principle. There are four shirts to choose from, three pants, and two socks to choose from. So we multiply each of those choices together to get a total of 24 outfits. Definitely one of the easiest questions on here, right? As long as you can identify what tool to use. 
Right. Question two. The U.S. Postal Service recommends that all pieces of mail have on it the correct nine-digit zip code, assuming no restrictions how many possible zip codes are there. Now, two things. One, nine-digit zip code, I'm immediately thinking it's like the license plate, right? There are nine spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm immediately drawing that little diagram for myself. Next thing, assuming no restrictions, what does that mean? What that means is you can interpret that to mean repeats are okay. That's what that means, okay? Repeats are okay. All right, so knowing that and having our little diagram here, how many different zip codes are there? Well, if we have um, digits to choose from instead of letters, obviously you can have letters in a zip code in the United States, but if they're just digits, you can have the digits zero through nine. So zero through nine can go into each of these slots. In the first slot, that means you have 10 different options. And since they said you are allowed to repeat, that means you have 10 different options in the next slot. And you're allowed to repeat again, you're allowed to repeat, and there's no change in the number of options in each of these slots or positions. So this problem comes out to be 10 to the ninth power, or one with nine zeros after it. That's how many different uh, zip codes there are. Okay, So not too bad. Definitely a diagram helps in definitely understanding what that phrase, assuming no restrictions, will mean for you. All right, let's take a look at this. Bridget needs to change her, pa her computer password. Her password must be exactly six characters long. Now I immediately start drawing myself a diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's just super helpful for me to have that visual. And no repeated characters. Okay, so unlike the last one where repeats were okay, we can't repeat things here. If each character can be chosen from the English alphabet or from the digits one through nine, not zero through nine, how many possible password choices does she have? Well, the English alphabet has 26 letters. And the digits 1 through 9, that's 9 choices, not 10, it's 9 choices. So if all of those things are available to us in each of these slots, that means there are 26 plus 9 things available, letters or numbers, available to us. So that's 35 things available to us for this first position. Once we use one of those things, we're not allowed to repeat that on the next position. So we're down to only 34 choices for her password. Then we're down to 33 choices, then we're down to 32, then we're down to 31, then we're down to 30, because we can't repeat. No repeated characters. So this first position has 35 choices, times the 34 choices available for the second position, times the 33 available for the third position, and so forth. That visual definitely helps me. Now, if you're an advanced person and you can see how to do this for NPR, you can definitely do an NPR, a permutation for this. Absolutely will work, um, but the visual definitely helps me and will get the majority of students um, covered. So this turns out to be huge. 1, 168, 675, 200 choices. If you didn't get that number, go ahead and pause and make sure you've entered it correctly. So what is that? Thousand, million, billion. 1.1 billion choices for her password. And that's with that um, restriction that she can't repeat characters. If she could repeat characters, there'd be even more options. 1.1 billion choices for her password. Which is, of course, good because then it's hard to crack. All right, go ahead and attempt your practice. And if you want some extra practice, there's some on the summary sheet. Please attempt that before coming to class. And good luck.